Hi chemists, welcome back. We start our new unit on stoichiometry. And the good news is, is that you know a lot of concepts that we will be covering in this unit. So let's get started. In this video, you should be able to calculate the number of moles of a substance that can be produced or consumed using something called the mole ratio, describe the ways in which a balance equation can be interpreted, and review the basics of how to balance equations. A lot of students often ask, Ms. Raz, what does stoichiometry mean? Like, where does it come from? So the meaning is stoichion, element, and metron, meaning to measure. Stoichiometry is the study of quantities as it relates to chemical reactions. The balanced chemical equation is really important, as you know, but we can interpret it in multiple ways. So if we take a look at the synthesis of ammonia, we can interpret it in terms of molecules. So for example, for every one molecule of nitrogen reacts with three molecules of hydrogen to give you two molecules of ammonia. Another way, because chemists really don't talk just about individual molecules, is to talk about this in terms of mass. So we could start out with, for example, 28.02 grams of nitrogen reacts with 6.06 .06 grams of hydrogen, and it produces 34.08 grams of ammonia. Remember, law of conservation says that the mass of the reactants have to equal the mass of the products. Here's another relationship. Like I mentioned, we don't really focus so much on individual molecules. Instead, it's far more helpful and far more useful chem for chemists to talk about large quantities of atoms and molecules. And that's where the mole comes in. We could also look at this relationship as one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to produce two moles of ammonia. This is the relationship that we are going to focus on in this unit. What we are going to be performing is something called a mole-mole calculation. You'll understand why in a couple of minutes. So basically what we can do is we can use the coefficients in the balanced equation to represent the smallest whole number mole ratio between the reactants and products. So for example, in this equation, we can have multiple mole ratios from the information given. So for example, what I have around the coefficients are red boxes. These are the numbers that you're going to use to make your ratios. So for example, you could have one mole of nitrogen over one mole of ammonia. You could have three moles of hydrogen over one mole of nitrogen, two moles of ammonia over three moles of hydrogen. It really just depends on what you're looking for um, and what you are given to start. So here's an example, very typical stoichiometry calculation. It says if you have 3.86 moles of potassium and it reacts with completely with excess water, how many moles of hydrogen would be produced? Just like usual, a really helpful strategy is to start out with that balanced chemical equation. Then we'll convert our word equation into our formula equation. Now comes the known and the unknown. And this is what you're used to. So we know that we have 3.86 moles of potassium. And what we're trying to find is how many moles of hydrogen. I find it's really helpful to circle the substances that you're working with in the balanced chemical equation because it'll make it a lot easier for you to select your mole ratio that way then. So we'll take our 3.86 moles of potassium and we'll put it over one like usual. We'll draw our multiplication sign and what we are, again, are trying to do is draw a ratio between the potassium and the hydrogen. So what we see here is for every two moles of potassium that are reacted, you can produce one mole of hydrogen, assuming that you have as much water as you need. So that's why the ratio is going to be two moles of potassium to one mole of hydrogen, and then moles of potassium and moles of potassium divide out, and you're left with moles of hydrogen. So you'll divide 3.86 moles by the two moles, and you should get 
1.93 moles of hydrogen. This is called a mole-mole calculation. The reason why is because we start with moles, like here, moles of K, and we're ending with moles, like here, moles of hydrogen. Let's try the next one. This one says, how many moles of aluminum will react with 0.512 moles of hydrochloric acid? Again, like usual, I don't give you the big equation, and you absolutely need the balanced chemical equation when you're doing this. So we'll start out with our aluminum reacting with hydrochloric acid. This is a single replacement reaction where we have to change the acid name into its ionic name. So that would be hydrogen chloride. And then what we get is aluminum chloride and hydrogen. We then need our balanced formula equation. And it'll look something like that. Next up, let's write our known and our unknown. And as I mentioned, a really helpful strategy is circling those substances that are in the known and the unknown. So I'm going to circle the aluminum and the hydrochloric acid because that is what the mole ratio is going to be between. And I know that because the, the known and the unknown have these units of aluminum and hydrochloric acid. So that's why I circled those two. We'll take our known and put it over one. Then our conversion factor is now going to relate the moles of aluminum to the moles of hydrochloric acid. The only way to do this is to say for every six moles of hydrochloric acid that reacts, two moles of aluminum are required. And so that is why that is going to be your ratio. Like usual, make sure that the substances and the units are always included. That's really, really important, especially because like you see in this unit, we're going to be working with multiple substances. And then of course, just make sure that the units divide out and then you can do your mathematical calculation using your calculator. Like usual, your significant figures are typically rounded to the number of significant figures that you have to start. So since 0.512 has three, that's why our answer is going to have three. So hopefully that helps you. Your teacher may have asked you to turn in an exit ticket after this lesson. And then, of course, you will have homework because practice often makes perfect. Thank you so much for watching.